Hi, I'm Tyler Fulce. I'm a nuclear engineer with a little over 10 years of experience in the commercial nuclear power industry. From engineering to operations to emergency response. I don't claim to know everything there is nuclear, but I can certainly share some knowledge. Please join me on a journey to a cleaner energy future by liking and subscribing. Today we're going to be looking at another Kurtzgazat video called Wormholes Explained Breaking Space Time. Sounds awesome. If you saw a wormhole in reality, it would appear round, spherical, a bit like a black hole. Light from the other side passes through and gives you a window to a faraway place. Once crossed, the other side comes fully into view, with your old home now receding into that shimmering spherical window. But are wormholes real, or are they just magic disguised as physics and maths? If they are real, how do they work, and where can we find them? For most of human history, we thought space was pretty simple. A big, flat stage where the events of the universe unfold. Even if you take down the set of planets and stars, there's still something left. That empty stage is space, and it exists. Unchanging and eternal. Einstein's theory of relativity changed that. It says that space and time make up that stage together, and they aren't the same everywhere. The things on the stage can affect the stage itself, stretching and warping it. If the old stage was like unmoving hardwood, Einstein's stage is more like a waterbed. This kind of elastic space can be bent and maybe even torn and patched together, which could make wormholes possible. Let's see what that would look like in 2D. Our universe is like a big flat sheet. Bent in just the right way, wormholes could connect two very, very distant spots with a short bridge that you could cross almost instantaneously, enabling you to travel the universe even faster than the speed of light. So, where can we find a wormhole? Presently, only on paper. General <laughs> relativity says they might be possible, but that doesn't mean they have to exist. General relativity is a mathematical theory. It's a set of equations that have many possible answers, but not all maths describes reality. But they are theoretically possible, and there are different kinds. The I have to say, I love this background. It makes me think of a very 80s synth, uh, almost looks like a Journey album. <laughs> First kind of wormholes to be theorized were einstein rosen bridges. They describe every black hole as a sort of portal to an infinite parallel universe. Let's try to picture them in 2D again. Empty space-time is flat, but curved by objects on it. If we compress that object, space-time gets more curved around it. Eventually, space-time becomes so warped that it has no choice but to collapse into a black hole. A one-way barrier forms, the event horizon, which anything can enter, but nothing can escape trapped forever at the singularity at its core. But maybe there is no singularity here. One possibility is that the other side of the event horizon looks a bit like our universe again, but mirrored upside down, where time runs backwards. In our universe, things fall into the black hole. In the parallel universe with backwards time, the mirror black hole is spewing things out a bit like a big bang. This is called a white hole. Unfortunately, einstein rosen bridges can't actually be crossed. It takes an infinite amount of time to cross over to the opposite universe, and they crimp shut in the middle. I was gonna say, the whole principle behind a singularity is you have infinite mass. <laughs> so you can't possibly go through there. Um, the idea of a white hole is kind of cool, but it's like, how would you actually get from from inside the singularity or hole, if you will, to the, to the other side. If you go into a black hole, you won't become the stuff coming out of the white hole. You'll only become dead. So, to travel the cosmos in the blink... Keep in mind, you would be crushed at the singularity of infinite mass, but I think what they're getting at here is the whole infinite time uh, concept. You just aged, you would just age to death at this point but you would probably get crushed to death first. <laughs>
and I, humans need a different kind of wormhole, a traversable wormhole. If string theory, or one of its variations, is the correct description of our universe, then we could be lucky, and our universe might even have a tangled web of countless wormholes already. Shortly after the Big Bang, quantum fluctuations in the universe at the smallest scales, far, far smaller than an atom, may have created many, many traversable wormholes. Threaded through them are strings, called cosmic strings. In the... To give you a sense of how small this is, a Planck length, I think we are comparing like the size of a solar system to an atom, and then it's the dif the difference between another um, solar system to atom to go from atom to Planck length. And I think even there, that's you're still going to come up way too big relative to Planck length. It's it's crazy. Just a billionth of a trillionth of a second after the Big Bang, the ends of these tiny, tiny wormholes were pulled light years apart, scattering them through the universe. If wormholes were made in the early universe, whether with cosmic strings or some other way, they could be all over, just waiting to be discovered. One might even be closer than we realize. From the outside, black holes and wormholes can look very similar, leading some physicists to suggest the supermassive black holes in the center of galaxies are actually wormholes. It will be very hard to go all the way to the center of the Milky Way to find out, though, but that's okay. There might be an equally extremely hard way to get our hands on a wormhole. We could try to make one. One other thing about the uh, center of the galaxy, since, the, since that supermassive black hole is so much bigger, you could probably cross the event horizon and it won't kill you via spaghettification, um, basically stretching you to death uh, before you actually, um, after you cross the event horizon. So you might actually be able to see what it looks like. Problem is, you wouldn't be able to communicate with the outside world once you cross there. That'd be cool. To be traversable and useful, there are a few properties we want a wormhole to have. First, it must obviously connect two distant parts of space-time, like your bedroom and the bathroom, or Earth and Jupiter. Second, it should not contain any event horizons, which would block two-way travel. Yep. Third, it should be sufficiently sized so that the gravitational forces don't kill human <laughs> travelers. The biggest problem we well. have to solve is keeping our wormholes open. No matter how we make wormholes, gravity tries to close them. Gravity wants to pinch it closed and cut the bridge, leaving only black holes at the ends. Whether it's a traversable wormhole with both ends and ours, or a wormhole to another universe, it will try to close unless we have something propping it open. For very old string theory wormholes, that's the cosmic string's job. For man-made wormholes, we need a new ingredient. Exotic matter. This isn't anything like we find on Earth, or even antimatter. It's something totally new and different and exciting, with crazy properties like nothing that's ever been seen before. Exotic. Before we get there, um, you could even go just as far as forces exerting against gravity, like just a matter of like pulling against it. Um, but sure, let's go with exotic matter. <laughs> matter is stuff that has negative mass. Positive mass, like people and planets and everything else in the universe, is attractive because of gravity. But negative mass would be repulsive. It would push you away. This makes a kind of anti-gravity. Or you could use electromagnetic forces. Thoughts? The props open our wormholes. And exotic matter must exert enormous pressure to push space-time open, greater even than the pressure at the centers of neutron stars. With exotic matter, we could weave space-time however we see fit. We may even have a candidate for this exotic matter, the vacuum of space itself. Quantum fluctuations in empty space are constantly creating pairs of particles and antiparticles, only for them to be annihilated an instant later. The vacuum of space is boiling with them, and we can already manipulate them to produce an effect similar to the negative mass we're looking for. We could use this to stabilize our wormholes. Once we're keeping it open, the ends would start together, so we'd have to move them around to interesting places. 
That's, that's interesting. Yeah, you'd have to find a way to uh, synergize all of those negative fluctuations, if you will. Remember, we're talking about Planck lengths, very small, infinitesimal distances and infinitesimal amounts of force. You've got to find a way to stack all those together in order to do something like that. But it's a fascinating idea. We could start by wiring the solar system, leaving one end of each wormhole in orbit around the Earth. We could fling others into deep space. The Earth could be a wormhole hub for a vast interstellar human civilization spread over light years, but only a wormhole away. However, wormholes have a dark side. Even opening a single wormhole kind of breaks the universe in fundamental ways, potentially creating time travel paradoxes and violating the causal structure of- Love the Back to the Future references. <laughs> universe. Many scientists think that this not only means they should be impossible to make, but that it's impossible for them to exist at all. So for now, we only know that wormholes exist in our hearts and on paper in the form of equations. We know you want to know more about universe stuff, so we're trying something new. Kurt Kazant and Brilliant are collaborating on a six-part video series about our favorite science and space things. And here we get into their sponsors. That, that was a really cool one. Probably my favorite music of all the Kurtz Gazat ones I've reacted to. And I love the cheesy 80s soundtrack reference. And of course, with Back to the Future. The whole par paradox thing is interesting because it's like, well, if you could time travel, wouldn't you have already done it now? Because, you know, with all of time you could play with someone across some distance in the future, even when we've had more advanced technology, presumably, would have already done it. Maybe they have. What do you think about that? Have we done time travel before and we're just kind of keeping it up? Kind of like the whole Fermi paradox thing with aliens. It's just this closely guarded secret. Or are time travel wormholes? Are they actually a thing? And uh, or, or, um, or rather, are they not? Are they not a thing, and they're just not possible to do? I'm leaning somewhere in the middle, just based on the fact that there's so much we have yet to learn, and there have been such breakthroughs in science that we've had that previous, even top tier scientists thought were impossible, such as Lord Kelvin thinking heavier than air flying machines were impossible about. 40 some odd years before the Wright brothers flew their first plane. Anyway, food for thought. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time.